Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Guide. It's all about your funds and your returns. I am Murli Das Faminathan. We have been receiving a number of queries from investors from across India. Every show we try to make an attempt to get answers to uh, all your queries from our experts. But this particular show, we have decided to dedicate the entire episode to answering all your queries. Joining me on the show today are Pankaj Matpal and Vatsal Shah. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. There are a number of queries, as you know, and some of the queries may look uh, similar because week after week we keep getting, you know, the kind of uh, clients who keep coming to you and uh, most of them ask about uh, what should I do after retirement, how should I save for children, how should I uh, save for college education. You know, some of those questions are very uh, uh, common in nature, yeah. but we will not hesitate. We will ask, uh, we'll answer almost all the same questions. If they are repeated, doesn't matter. We'll come to you. So let's take the first caller. Gopal is on the line from Bangalore. Gopal, what's your query? Yeah, my query is I have uh, substantial, I'm actually 54 years old yeah. and uh, I have substantial investment, say 12 lakhs in uh, Franklin India Prima Plus. Okay. As far as I am concerned, the performance of the fund has been quite good. I'm, I'm a long-term investor. Yeah. I have been uh, invested in this fund for the past six years. Okay. Okay. And uh, I had done SIP and I had closed the SIP last year uh, by September right. because I have now I'm, I don't have a regular job right now. So right. I have uh, stopped my SIP and now, uh, uh, you know, the fund performance has been reasonably good. It is giving around 20 to 23 percent per annum uh, return. Sure. But uh, the various rating agencies have not given a good rating for this fund. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in one of the websites, they have very clearly recommended mm -hmm. that it is better to shift to uh, another fund. Uh, now yeah. I am concerned because yeah. as I see the fund performance is good yeah. and uh, when I took it up with uh, Franklin India, they have made a very clear statement that this is a very good fund right. and you can stay invested. But I want to have a neutral view on this fund. What right. should I do? Should I stay invested or should I switch over to other funds? I am a long-term investor. I am willing to hold the uh, money for another five years. Not right. a problem. Very, very good question, uh, Gopal. You know, this is the kind of question uh, we always uh, try, uh, try to answer. We'll, uh, uh, we'll be neutral in this. Let me toss this to our uh, guest. Vatsal, you want to go first? Yeah, Gopal. So, very valid question that why do the uh, rating agencies are giving it uh, negative? So, see, rating agencies, they work on uh, relative returns. Okay, so relative means at today's market compared to other funds, what is Franklin Prima Plus performing? What happens is that over a longer period, these ratings do fluctuate, though they don't change much because they check all the returns. But what I, uh, this particular fund, if you are very comfortable with your cost price and you are seeing a good return, then you should stay invested because ultimately you have invested with a good fund house and they are more consistent in nature. So that, that should not worry you much considering you've got a significant double digit return on that. Right, uh, Pankaj, you would like yeah. to add? See, uh, when he said that he's comfortable with the returns, I'll tell you one thing, people see only number. See, if you're getting 20% return, you are very happy. But when you invest in mutual funds, first thing is you should compare to this benchmark. If you have seen that benchmark returns are more than that, if you say last one year, as well as in last three years, benchmark returns are higher than the returns of this fund. So definitely the rating agency has uh, done a justification with this. Uh, because there are different parameters, returns and risk. And when you see returns also, you have to see where the returns are coming from. How much risk has been taken to generate that alpha, to generate the extra returns. So here, there is no extra returns, of course, in last one year, three year period. So one thing is that definitely this fund is not able to beat this benchmark. As compared to category average return also, it is underperforming, though AMC is good. There are expectation that this will do, in, do good in future, but as of now, there are better funds compared to this. If you want to switch to some other funds, there are funds in the same category. It is a multi-cap fund. You can switch to some other fund, but otherwise means if you are happy because you have made money in past and considering the reputation of AMC, you want to stay there, it is your choice. Yeah, let me uh, add this, uh, Gopal. Uh, now, uh, before, uh, see, uh, let's get a little more clarity. When he says rating, rating by who? who? Yes. You know, that's a very important question we need to ask. And this is a 100% equity fund? 
Yes, it's a diversified multi-cap fund. Now, for the benefit of the viewers, uh, uh, Gopal, last uh, uh, show we had a similar query, and I did a little bit of uh, uh, search and found that there is no question of rating for an equity fund. See, if it is a debt fund, and if the money is not going to come back, because debt funds primarily lend it to uh, other people, you know, they take money from you and they lend it to someone else. There, the credit rating agencies come into play. Now, here in this case, if we say it's uh, it's about past performance and uh, the star rating that's given, that's an opinion again. Right. Now, you need to go by the uh, portfolio. Take a look at the portfolio. But still, I'll say the opinion which is given, that is also correct. Because right. when you compare with the benchmark, see, any equity fund has to be compared with its benchmark. Correct. If a scheme has delivered, say, 10% last one year, and uh, that time the performance of the broader market of the, or the benchmark was, say, 15%, right. so, so definitely 10% is bad. But if the market performed by 5% and a scheme has delivered 7%, that is also good. So it's not 20%, it's not 5%. It is that how much extra return you are able to generate compared to benchmark. Yeah, no, so, so let's yeah. also be practical. See, it's difficult for an investor to invest in a benchmark. Mm -hmm. Benchmark is only a parameter. Correct. I would rather, no, let me take a look at the uh, portfolio, if I'm not wrong. The, the latest portfolio that I have is uh, they hold Finalux Cables, HDFC Bank, S Bank, Apollo Tires, Equitas Holding, Vapco, Voltas. This is a growth story that Correct. they are looking at. Yes. Now, it's a question of conviction that matters, you know, like you rightly pointed out. You want to add something, Watson? Also, we can consider his returns of the index yeah. from the day he invested, right. rather than just looking at last one or two years. Exactly the so point. So, if that is uh, beating the index returns, I think he is... He, he's entered at a good time. Good time, yeah. yeah. So, Gopal, uh, uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, to, to some extent, yes. But do I have another option? Say, for example, if uh, the other person who is there on the panel is uh, suggesting that I should switch to some other uh, multi-cap fund, maybe yeah. M35 or uh, something like that, which, which one uh, is uh, a better option? I am willing to take that option. That is what right. I wanted to understand. SBI Magnum multi-cap fund is a good choice in the same category. Okay. Okay, SBI Magnum multi charge. But okay. I cannot do it bulk, no. So I have to do, I have to go for a debt fund in SBI and then do SPP into SBI Magnum uh, multi cap, right? Yeah, you can see. Uh, in a staggered manner, I'll uh, suggest you to invest. Either you okay. choose the STP route or on your own, you invest in some five, six weeks. Uh, whenever you see the market is a bit down, that time you invest that fund. So a choice is yours. Lump sum also can invest or you can invest in through STP route. Okay. okay SP, can you repeat the name again? SBI Magnum? Multi cap fund. Okay. SBI Magnum, Magnum multi cap uh, fund. Uh, Gopal, thanks for uh, calling us. Let's uh, move on. We have Santosh on the line from uh, Vijayanagaram, Andhra Pradesh. What's your query, Santosh? Uh, hello all, very good evening to all. Yeah. Um, I'm new to markets, new to market investments. Uh, I want to invest 3,000 rupees in small cap and I want to invest another 3,000 rupees in large cap. Uh, as I'm new to markets, I want to know which funds do I need to choose to get better returns. I can invest for more than 5 to 10 years and if possible, I can invest more also. Okay, Pankaj, you would like to take or what's uh, Yeah, I can take this. Yeah. So, uh, Santosh, uh, uh, very straightforward question, but this is a question which most people have, that there's so many funds, what do I pick? So generally for a new time investor, one should look at a fund which has a low volatility and more consistency. Keeping that in mind, uh, based on our research, ICICI large and mid cap, which was erstwhile ICICI top 100 fund, that is more in that parameter. And uh, you can also consider on the small cap side, uh, Franklin Smaller Companies Fund or Reliance Small Cap Fund. So these two are good small cap names with your good consistency track record. Okay, you yeah. got the answer, Santosh? Uh, yes, yes, what is the fund name, Franklin? Smaller Companies Fund or Reliance Smaller Small Cap Fund for the okay. small cap uh, investment. Yeah. Okay, I, I heard Reliance Small Cap uh, Reliance Small Cap Fund is not accepting as of now via, I mean, if I want to invest via SRP. I have yes. heard. I'm not sure. Uh, up to a level. So, uh, beyond 25,000, they are not accepting. So, small amount okay. they are accepting. Uh, okay. So, that's uh, that's not an issue. 
Right. Okay. So very clearly, if there is a smaller amount, they accept. They I think, accept. In the, they uh, small accept. Cap. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on. Uh, we this is a query through email, which we have got from Jatin Anand from uh, Delhi. He has two part questions. He wants to invest in mutual funds to save tax and generate returns. Should he invest in ELSS, debt funds, or equity funds? The second one is what's the return rate on lump sum and SIP investment? Now he also wants to know your view on Reliance Small Cap Fund. You just now uh, spoke. Uh, maybe uh, you want to add to the. Uh, yeah. See, first question uh, you asked that whether you want to, we should invest in debt fund, equity fund, or ELSS because you want to save tax. So if the objective is tax saving along with growth, then definitely ELSS, ELSS. is the only choice available with you. So you invest in ELSS, and there are some good funds available like Aditya Birla Sun Life, Tax Relief 96 is. One of the best funds in this category, you can choose. And uh, second thing, SIP return and lump sum. It depends because SIP gives you uh, rupee cost averaging benefit, means when the market is up, you get lesser unit, but when market comes down, you get more units. So over a period of time, you get average cost. It helps you beating volatility. Mm -hmm. But if you have some lump sum amount right now available with you and time horizon is very long, oh. then you should not wait for SIP. Rather, you invest through STP and invest that money in four to in say, say ten say, weeks or something like yeah, that. Correct, correct. So that is another thing. And uh, apart from that, Reliance Small Cap Fund. See, uh, by this question, it looks like that he's a new investor. Hmm. My suggestion to new investor: you should invest in diversified equity funds in large cap or large or mid cap funds. Right. So uh, small cap fund, because these funds are more volatile compared to these large caps. So when you have a big portfolio, you want to invest a 10, 20 percent in a small cap for long term. It is a good strategy. Good strategy yeah. For this kind of investor, my suggestion that you should invest in multi cap fund. Multi cap fund. One more clarification I want on the systematic transfer uh, plan, which is the STP. Now, suppose let's say somebody has got 10 lakhs bulk investment. Now. Uh, right from day one, do they systematically transfer or yeah. allow it to grow for some time? And then how? what would you advise? So if you want to uh, invest the 10 lakh rupees, mm. then we invest that money in liquid funds mm -hmm. and we offer STP. Right. So now this 10 lakh rupees will not wait for 10 months or one year, something. Correct. In most of cases, we'll try to invest that money in three months, six months time. Hmm. If the, it's a very large amount and you want to invest for a longer duration, that may be some choice, right. but not like SIP where we plan where for five years, ten years. Year. Okay. Okay. So okay. here, like, if the small so in, amount, in three, four months, they because, can because because uh, they offer you daily STP, weekly STP, monthly STP. Right. So usually, what we do if say there is a one lakh rupee, mm -hmm. we'll try to invest in ten weeks. Okay. Okay, so so, so, so in the duration, like, the mm -hmm. amount gets divided into equal parts. Yeah. parts. So, so, so uh, it the benefit of averaging. Yeah. And exactly. That one time so, shock uh, will not so, be so, 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 suppose we are talking about this election result and something. Mm -hmm. So, rather than I invest today, I think that I invest in over a period of six weeks. Mm -hmm. So, that will give me some average return. Let the uh, market stabilize exactly. and uh, so don't that go is with something you. like this. Very important uh, uh, observations on how to use STP as a vehicle to invest and not get trapped in one-time investment and shocks. Uh, on that note, let me go across to the next question. Uh, this is Vijay, who is on the line from Nagpur. Uh, Vijay, what's your query? Sir, uh, I'm calling from Nagpur, Maharashtra. Vijay Chauragade. Hi. Uh, sir, sir, I have uh, two questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, I, have, I want to uh, build a uh, big corpus for my my son education. Very good. So, what are the, what are the top uh, three uh, mutual funds in small cap, mid cap, and balance category, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 to get uh, paid to 15 percent uh, return. And uh, my second question is, uh, how standard deviation uh, alpha and beta can uh, can help to beat uh, to choose a best mutual fund? Right. Uh, what's you want to take this? Yeah. So first, coming to his. Uh, yeah, Vijay, your point about actually investing in a balanced fund, mid and small cap fund for your children's education, uh, I feel you need to relook at that decision. If if you have at least five years uh, there for your children's education uh, graduation, you can actually look at a full diversified equity portfolio. A balanced fund uh, may not be needed to actually cushion that kind of a 
corpus. Mm. Again, his goal is to achieve uh, 12 to 15 percent returns. Yeah. So you will need a blended average of a large, mid, and Blended, a small cap, small. Uh, so that your average comes to around 15 percent uh, kind of returns. Now, coming to which funds are good, uh, I would say that uh, there are many good funds available out there. Whichever funds he chooses, he has to review it every three years. Three that years. is very important, uh, Vijay, to review your portfolio every three years. Given that, uh, you know, in the large cap space, we really like uh, Kotak's, Kotak's Select Focus Fund. And in the mid cap space, uh, we, we also like uh, SBI mid cap, HDFC mid cap. They both are very good. And in the small cap, as I highlighted earlier, Franklin Smaller Companies and Reliance uh, Small Cap Fund. So okay. these, these five funds uh, are... Good fund. Very uh, one good. Thing, one thing he asked about standard yeah. deviation, yeah, beta standard, and yeah. alpha. Mm. See, uh, alpha is basically a measure of return that how much excess return compared to its benchmark uh, the scheme has delivered with the same degree of risk. Right. See, if the returns have come with the extra risk taken, then that's a different thing. But risk is same and extra returns compared to benchmark. So that is alpha basically. That shows the wisdom of fund manager. So if a, a scheme is generating alpha, that is the actual returns. Second thing is standard deviation and beta. These are measure of risk. Means how much risk has been taken. Beta is basically a risk, risk in the terms of volatility. See, market uh, has beta of 1. So if a scheme has beta lesser than 1, it means it is supposed to be lesser volatile Le compared, compared to, to the market. market. Standard deviation, how much the scheme returns have deviated from its mean. So lesser the standard deviation, it is better. Otherwise, what will happen? A scheme which is giving sometime 20%, sometime minus 5%. Another scheme which is giving consistently, say, 12-15%. So consistency is more important. So lower standard deviation, lower beta, higher alpha is the good for the scheme's performance. Very important investor education uh, thoughts coming from our experts. Yes. Uh, on that note, I think I have to slip into a short break. We'll come back and take some more queries. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Mutual Fund Guide. It's all about your funds and your returns. Let me go across quickly to another caller. Karan is on the line from Mumbai. Karan, what's your query? Uh, hi, uh, hi. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, my query is basically I have a sum of about uh, 40 lakhs. And uh, uh, it's basically just matured out of an FD. Right. And I might need it in the next three to six months. So I've decided to go in for a uh, short-term uh, debt fund instead of an FD. So the objective is to keep the capital safe uh, and maybe have better returns than a fixed deposit for the next three to six months. Capital safe and uh, better returns. Yeah. Okay. See, the time horizon only six months, three to six months, and if it's, it is fixed, I'll again suggest you should go for fixed deposit only. If you are saying that you know the time horizon, but if you are not sure about this and within six months you say, then there can be some short-term debt funds, like Franklin India, uh, short-term fund that is one good funds and returns wise during the period of three to six months it will be almost same as your three to six month uh, FD returns mm -hmm. so you have both the choices again I'll say it's not only mutual fund if you are sure the time horizon is three month or six month then three to six month FDs can also be a good choice otherwise short-term fund as I said okay current mm -hmm. hope that answers your query uh, yeah it does it does actually I had another query actually sure so, uh, uh, I've been researching index funds and uh, ETFs, so I wanted to understand if there is a difference between an index ETF fund and an index fund. For example, like a Kotak, Kotak Nifty ETF fund and a UTI index fund, like both mimic the Nifty, but what is the difference and which is a better option to take for okay, the long term? So, yeah, so, yeah, Karan, uh, see that way structurally ETF products are made to be easily tradable on the exchange versus an index fund is made for a little longer term investment. Now again, uh, given the tradable nature of the ETF, uh, the expense ratios are much uh, lower versus an index fund. So if you want to look at uh, the tracking error, when we say tracking error, how easily it mirrors the funds. So how easily it mirrors the index. So that mirroring is much more uh, closer in ETFs. 
considering that uh, ETF would be a better option if you want to just uh, invest in the market. But but one thing is, if you have a DMAT account already existing, because if you want to invest a small amount, for example, mm. and for that, especially you open a DMAT account, it will add to the cost. Mm -hmm. See, because ultimately when it's an index fund, whether ETF or a mutual index mutual fund, both have the same portfolio because so, yeah. index fund has in to index. have yeah. same index. Yeah. So in that case means if already investor has a DMAT account mm. and is mm. easily tradable, then this can go for ETF. ETF. Otherwise, yeah. then uh, index fund itself is a good choice. And uh, ETF gives you liquidity, I think. Yeah. You can get in and get out. So that's why I said want. from uh, index fund also you can index, definitely yeah. redeem that. Yeah. Only index fund is tradable, tradable, so you can trade it. Right. So you can, you can through your broker, you can sell and buy it. Right. Uh, index yeah. and mutual fund ETF, yeah. and otherwise index fund, you have to submit so your application to the, to the uh, AMC. AMC. That is also online, you can do it you today, do it. nowadays. Uh, but with the, in the case of ETF, you can do it at any point, at any price yeah. of the day. Yeah, you can plan your pricing. You can plan your pricing. Pricing can be yeah. planned, you can time it yeah. in you such a manner. So investor that, uh, who have demand account, for them that is good choice. Right, okay. Our next query uh, is uh, Srikant uh, from Bangalore. He is emailed us this question. He has invested in IDFC Tax Advantage, DSP BlackRock Small Cap Fund, LNT Emerging Business and Reliance Small Cap Fund. He aims to build a corpus of 5 crore in 20 years. What's your view? 5 crore, 20 wow. years. He has named some 3 or 4 funds. Right. There's a lot of money uh, yes. that needs to be. So, hmm. I think that that's kind of an ambitious goal and you know, he needs to really back calculate. So, hmm. if you look at 5 crores over 20 years, so even at a 12% compounding, it would come around to 45 to 50,000 rupees per month. Per month. Yeah. Okay. So, that is a good, uh, good if commitment. If it's through SIP. It's, uh, if it's through SIP, considering a 12% uh, compounding, compounding uh, angle. Again. So, if, if he's actually investing uh, that much, uh, he will likely be close to achieving his goal of uh, five, 5 crores. Coming to the funds, uh, I believe all the funds are aggressive, uh, volatile and uh, you know more of a mid-cap kind of a nature. Even the IDFC tax advantage is a multi-cap fund. So you need to really review. Right now the returns are good, so historic returns will look good. But the moment uh, the mid-cap party, which is already seeming to be over, yeah. so, uh, you know, the moment the large-cap party takes over, you will start seeing underperformance in the fund. So, you need to have a better balance, balance uh, compared to if his goal large is... large-cap, mid-cap and, and uh, small-cap. Small small yeah. Any investor, you know, when they say returns, always will see when the market is rally in the market, a small-cap will outperform the broader Correct. market. Yeah. But this is not the way of investing in mutual fund. Though you have a longer time horizon, and you can easily expect in 20 years time horizon 12 15 percent return so 40 50000 per month will definitely help you achieving your goal but at the same time suppose the market does not perform in that way no. then you will um, repent on your decisions so better Correct. you should have a well diversified portfolio where you have large cap you have mid cap and some part in small, small cap. cap but we, here it is the other way around, other way around mostly uh, your investment is in small cap and yeah, mid cap yeah it's too aggressive so should, and it could exactly. be too risky so also you should add large cap funds to your yeah. portfolio Right. Okay. So, on that note, let me uh, take this uh, one more query, again, coming from Bengaluru. Uh, this is from Umesh. Uh, he's emailed us this query. He has invested in LNT Emerging Business Fund and Aditya Birla Sun Life Frontline Equity. His objective is to save 60 lakhs in 15 years for his child's education. What's the view? Okay. See, again, uh, one large cap fund and one is small cap fund. Mid cap is missing here. missing here. So though time horizon is good and you want to accumulate 60 lakh rupees, for that if you invest around 12,000 per month, you'll be able to achieve your goal. If I um, consider a equity returns what we have experienced in the past 12 to 15 percent around, you can achieve your goal. Only thing, both the schemes are good. Only add one multi cap fund to your portfolio or one mid cap fund to your portfolio. Right, very clear, multi-cap or uh, mid-cap fund. And uh, uh, and uh, I think we have time for one more uh, query. I think uh, this is Balakrishna from Bangalore. Again, this is uh, from Bangalore. We are getting lots of queries from Bangalore. Uh, his query is, he wants to know if the 1 lakh long-term capital gains exemption is applied on the combined profits of shares and mutual funds or if it's applied separately on each. Okay, very straightforward. Uh, the government has said that long-term capital gain on equity assets, assets. of 1 lakh is yeah. a redemption. So, for the government, it's the same, same thing. thing yeah. So, they will 
add up the gains and yeah. uh, he will get a 1 lakh uh, benefit only on the total gains total gains he will yeah. not uh, be able to benefit take benefit in mutual funds and in equity it is not uh, all combined will be it is equity, equity, so equity yeah. shares hmm. or equity or entity mutual yeah. funds so threshold limit is 1 lakh yeah. and tax will be applicable on the amount exceeding rupees 1 lakh rupees 1 lakh okay that answers uh, most of the queries we have managed to take as many queries but i think we have completely run out of time on this edition of the mutual fund guide we will be back next week to answer all your queries news and updates will continue on the other side of the break keep watching btvi